Hello, hello everybody. It's your old pal Tuna here back for another video. Welcome to the Emerald City Comic Con vlog. Uh, if you are new here, my name is Tuna. I'm an illustrator and comic artist and I live in Vancouver, BC, hence why I needed to do a little bit of traveling to get down to Seattle, Washington for this show. Now, Emerald City Comic Con is probably one of the biggest uh, comic conventions here in the Pacific Northwest. I don't do conventions full time, it's only part of my job and part of what I do, but I love it. And I'm very excited to be back from the last few years of things being like not quite 100% the same as they've been in years before. But yeah, happy to be back in Seattle for Emerald City. So the last time that I was here was in, um, I, I think it was 2018 or 2019, I'm kind of misremembering at this point. And back then, it honestly feels like so long ago now. <laughs> and my um, my like offerings were completely different. The style of art that I was doing was different. And so coming back from the pandemic, having had all that time to kind of like put together my new brand and then um, be able to, well, not debut it as I've done a couple of conventions since the uh, pandemic, um, but this is kind of one of the first opportunities this year and going forward it's sort of setting the pace for 2023. If you watched my last vlog, you would have seen me prepping for this show. Uh, I have a few new items including some pins and a patch and some sticker sheets, but for the most part I am a big sticker maker, so I have stickers that are left over from my subscription club, sticker club, and then prints that are left over from my subscription club, print club, um, and for the most part I don't actually have an online store that is open all the time or that sells these items, so this is kind of my opportunity to clear out some old stock and, you know, interface one-on-one -on -one with the people and see what they think of each design and kind of keep tabs on what's popular and what's not. Oh, but aren't they fun to see all together, not just living inside of my storage box? I, I love, like I said, I love doing these conventions. It's been something I've been doing for, I, I wanna say over a decade now, if not at least a decade. Started doing little fan art prints that I got printed at my local print shop and get like 10 copies of each and hope for the best. And I remember my first table that I ever did, I did not make back my costs. I think the table was like 50 bucks and then I spent 50 bucks on printing or whatever. And yeah, I didn't even make a hundred dollars that day. But you know what, here I am 10 years later and then I got into Emerald City Comic Con and I got my cute little banner. And every year it's like I get to try new things and see, you know, see my own growth through keeping a record of all of these. Ah, beautiful years of tabling, but I am super looking forward to this. Going through and editing this vlog has been a joy, so I really hope you have a fun time going along Emerald City Comic Con with me. I seriously hope to be back next year as well. Um, fingers crossed that they let me in again. You never know. But yeah, if you saw me here, thanks for coming by and enjoy the vlog without commentary. <laughs>
trying to do a stealth recording while I have a minute here. It's almost three o'clock on Thursday, so I think that's like halfway through the day, but honestly, who's counting? All I know is that I already ate lunch and now I have to wait until dinner. But so far, so good. Um, this is my first time doing Emerald City in four years. I think there was two that happened kind of like during the pandemic, so they weren't 100% normal. And this is the first time it's back, uh, and everyone seems really happy and excited to be here. I am flying solo, which I may have mentioned, and as a result, I'm stuck hanging out here behind my booth. And everyone is walking by, and they all have really cool stuff, and it makes me want to go shopping, but here I am. I already spent all my money during my time here before the show. I only had three copies of my anthology book that is published by Cloudscape Comics in Vancouver. I only had three copies and I already sold out of those. Um, <laughs> I have a really large amount of copies of my other books, so please come buy some books. You're, from, you're looking at this from the future, but that's okay. I'm sure you came and bought books anyway. But yeah, three, three whole days. Thursdays is usually kind of like a test run of the rest of the weekend, and things are already going smoothly. Tonight, there's kind of like a mixer for the Artist Alley and Exhibitor people. I think I'll drop by and just see, see who's there. I don't know. I definitely know a lot of people here, but at the same time, I'm stuck. Can't go say hi. Maybe they'll be there tonight. We'll see. Thursday evening. I just got in from my walk back from dinner at the convention center. My delicious pasta puttanesca a la neon light. <laughs> I keep choosing restaurants with terrible lighting. I was gonna keep a log of all the food that I ate while I was here, but now all of my pictures just look weird. I have purchased myself a nice little bottle of wine to enjoy a glass of night tonight. I decided against going to the mixer because I figured I have mixed enough in my day and age and what I would truly like out of my evening is to hang out here in my Airbnb until I pass out. I don't know, I'm feeling a little burnt out. Like today was awesome. It was nice and steady throughout the day, not too busy, but also not like just boring dead. So I don't know, I'm not boring dead, but I am feeling kind of low energy and I have to reserve some of that for the next three days. So I think that this is the right call. I'll show you my Airbnb while we're here. It is a room with a half of a wall and a kitchenette area that doesn't even have a stove. Uh, they have a hot plate, but geez, come on. I have my stash of weird groceries here. There is also, I got these takoyaki balls. They're okay. Every once in a while you get one that has like a ton of flavor, but otherwise they're kind of bland. This is my kitchen table that I've just been using to dump stuff on. Here is the bedroom. There's nowhere for me to put my clothes, so currently they live on the side of the bed that I don't live on. Same with the rest of my stuff. <laughs> and this is where I spend my time in the Airbnb. Uh, and I got this amazing uh, bathrobe while I was out shopping the other day. Let me show you, let me show you. Isn't it ultra cozy? You can't really tell, but there's like, yeah, there you go. There's like a micro spider web pattern on it. Like it's the only bathrobe that I'll ever need in my life and I don't have one. And also I want to be cozy right now. You know, is that so much to ask after a hard day's work? But yeah, I'm sure I'll see you guys at the con tomorrow, Friday, busier than Thursday, I suppose. I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna kick back, relax, watch some TV, and eat some snacks tonight. I promise by the end of the video, we'll go through like, I'll give you my thoughts on the whole weekend in general, because it's just, it's too early to say, and I think I'd like to just wrap it up at the end with, with that little bit.
How are you? Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Most of it is based off of my boy, who I'm showing to everything. Yes. Thank you. You have read this. You packed it on Kickstarter. Oh my god, thank you so much. Yeah, and it's so crazy because we did the Kickstarter. I completed the book. We fulfilled it in like February of 2020. And then the book just sat in my storage for like three years. And now it's finally getting out there and being read. And I released another graphic novel in that time. So it, it's so weird. But thank you so much for supporting the Kickstarter. I hope you liked it. <laughs> oh my gosh. And we they haven't met before, have we? No? Okay. I, I'm Tuna, obviously. And you, tu, Tuna, yes. <laughs> thank you. Hello, just checking in before things get crazy. It's day three of the con, which means it's Saturday, which means it's the busiest day, which means I am probably, well, hopefully, hopefully, going to be occupied all day and might not be able to get any clips, but yesterday and the day before, vote pretty much on par, like steady, slow, fun. I've been able to connect with so many people, like peers and colleagues and friends, and meet like maybe a couple fans, you know, one or two has dropped by. Hello, thank you for supporting me. Good, oh yeah, and let me tell you, the most popular things so far have been the Nori-related things. Believe it or not, tuxedo people feel a kinship, so my print and my Nori stickers, bestsellers so far. down a little bit so we have a minute and I thought it would be funny if I gave you a tour of the back of my table. Here's my view of my piles. Down here I have my suitcase. It used to be propped open but it fell closed now and it won't stay open anymore. Over on this side are my books. There used to be two boxes so so far so good on that. In this little pile I have some stock that I have ready to restock slash I've pulled. This is my last copy of this sticker sheet so I wanted to keep it behind just in case someone like comes back for it that saw it yesterday. In this hole I have gifts that people have given me which is really fun and the one thing that I bought so far which is these sticker sheets from, who is it? They're on the back here. Aaron Kubo, hello. They are clearly a kindred spirit because the sticker vibes are immaculate. And I love the way that they have these packaged and then the um, prints on the back, so I might have to cop that vibe for my own sticker club. Here I have my important um, tools, I guess, so stuff to sign stuff to repair when things fall down and uh, just you know anything that I might need in case of an emergency. Here is the important stuff hole. Money, sketchbook, tissues. Pretty simple. And then here I keep my sleeves. I have two sizes. I have a size that fits my prints and my stickers and then I have a big size that I will put like my, my uh, sketchbooks in for the most part. And the final pile over here this is my kind of emergency um, a personal care bag. It has tampons and lip chap and a hand moisturizer. I have my beverages on the go. Always got to keep my water close by and the ever important hand sanitizer. And down here in the suitcase is honestly a mess. I have my sticker sheets organized and my prints organized and then everything else is just sort of individually boxed as best as I can. And I've been eating a million animal crackers this weekend. Um, but yeah, that's the tour. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Oh my god, thank you. 
in cash or PayPal, is that okay? Okay, sweet. Oh my god, so cute. It's like a little scrunch. I love it. What's their name? Yeah, beautiful, so cute. <laughs> That was outrageously overwhelming, but it's nice that I was able to get out and actually see everything that the convention has to offer rather than just being trapped behind a table the whole time. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I am now experiencing the true co condensation of people that are in this building, and yeah, Comic-Con is back, I guess. <sighs> and I'm happy to be here. guys, it's me, Postcon Tuna, looking exactly the way that I always do, of course. But for real, I bought this specifically to wear to the... I mean, I, am I gonna go to the, the opening night of the Mario movie? I, I, I hope so. But either way, I'm planning to wear this and experience that film in the, the fourth dimension, basically. But yes, it's me here to decompress and tell you guys all about Emerald City Comic Con. I know that some of this footage is probably like a whir. I did my best to capture the vibes. As you know, I was hanging out behind the table for 90% of it, but I got to walk around a little bit. So I do feel like I got the full Comic Con experience. And before we get into the details, like, 10 out of 10, maybe not. I'm gonna say a solid 8.5 out of 10 experience. When it comes to doing these sorts of cons, obviously the first thing is like, I'm there to work, I'm there to sell my stuff, I am there to make money. It, you know, it, it costs me a lot to go down and participate, so I wanna make that back and then make a little profit just to kind of justify having spent four whole entire days on the show floor. But attending these sorts of things has other value. Like one thing is that you can network. So, you know, you're talking to the fellow people in the artist alley and everyone has badges, right? That say like artist alley or exhibitor or, you know, Friday attendee. So when people are walking around, you can get a sense of like who is, I don't wanna say like in the club because it's not like an exclusionary thing. It's just, you can kind of know how to communicate with people based on who they are and what they're doing at the show. And it's really easy to introduce yourself and say hello and get to know people. So I did a ton of that. I met up with a bunch of people who I have been mutuals with online, some of whom like, 
we didn't even really like realize that we were mutuals and then it was like, oh, hey, it's us. Some other people who I was meeting for the first time. I think that in and of itself is a huge part of why these in-person events are so valuable. And it was something that I kind of forgot and coming down here, I didn't want to do like party con, like back in my days of youth, I would like, be going out all night, like drinking and hanging out with people. And I don't have the stamina for that anymore. So going down, I kind of felt like I was going to fly solo, kind of be a bit of a homebody here in this nice Airbnb. And for the most part I was, but I still managed to get that social interaction just on the con floor, walking around. I'm glad that I was able to find a balance between zero and a hundred <laughs> because I don't think, I don't think I could do a hundred anymore. The other benefit is like you can meet your colleagues and then meeting your fans and just like being able to connect with new people who've never seen your work before, handing out cards, getting them to scan. Like I ran out of cards halfway through because I forgot to order some and I saw how many I had and I thought that's, that's not gonna fly. So I had the QR code set up for people to take photos. And so having that in-person interaction makes you more memorable to the customer because they can be like, I got this in person from that person who was nice to me and now I follow them. And like, you can kind of build more committed fans through the personal interaction. So ultimately a con has like many facets, many sides of why it's a valuable thing to do as a creator. And I think I got a little bit of all of those things. So I'm like, like I said, 8.5 and it's mostly just because I was alone the whole time. It would have been really fun if Mark could come down with me. <laughs> I wish, I wish he could. And I have like a couple of physical things going on. Like I pinched a nerve in my back, like while I was sleeping, not last night, but the night before. So for the last two days, I've had this really weird pain going on. Don't age, you guys. Do I cannot recommend aging at all. And I think in hindsight, maybe I would have been better off doing a little bit more after hours socializing, but at the end of the day, I have had a fantastic week. I'm heading back tomorrow, getting on that bus, going back into Canada, but that's not the last of this video because I owe you guys something good. And we all know that a Comic-Con haul is the best kind of haul. And not only that, I'm going to show you the stuff that I picked up while I was walking around Seattle in the two days that I had before the show because I came down early to like basically take a holiday and I went shopping for two days because I freaking love shopping, so. While I show off this little haul of mine, I had some other thoughts that I wanted to go over. First of all, I want to talk about what sold well. I mentioned that the Nori stuff sold really well. So I would highly recommend following your kitty cat themed heart because people really connected with that, which was a lot of fun. There was also a print that had, a, it was a black and white and red print with a witchy girl surrounded by some ghostly cats. I actually sold out of that print and it's my least favorite print because it's very not colorful. It's not in gouache, it's an ink painting, but maybe something about the fact that it was different from the rest made it stand out. It's hard to say really. As for stuff that didn't sell super well, the pins really were a slow mover. Um, pins are very oversaturated. I don't know if it's like, having to compete with so many people selling pins or if just people are cutting back on the amount of pins who's to say but either way didn't sell super well that's okay though because i'll have them for my shop drop coming up next week or the week after this i think as for the pacing i mentioned thursday was pretty slow friday was pretty slow and steady just a little bit more than thursday and then saturday and sunday were actually on par but i felt that there was less attendance on Sunday, but people were kind of more interested in spending the money. It was kind of like a good shopping day for everyone. And that was the vibe that I got from the rest of the exhibitors when I was talking and being like, how was your weekend? Like slow burner on the first couple of days and then picking up for the second couple. It sounds like a lot of people weren't turning a ton of profit though. So the last note that I'll leave you on is my investment was doubled. So I invested X amount of dollars. I made X amount of dollars times two which makes my profit kind of low for a big show like this. So would I do Emerald City Comic Con again? Yes, because it has added value that we talked about before, but I'll have to try and cut down on costs because the profit just isn't as high as I'd love it to be, or maybe I'll, you know, get good. <laughs> I wanna thank you so much for watching and being here and joining me on my Emerald City Comic Con adventure. I can't wait to do more shows. The next one that I'm doing is gonna be in May, but my life, you know, you guys, you're gonna see it week on week. <laughs> so be sure to subscribe if you are titillated by the content that I'm producing. And if you wanna leave a comment, uh, I would love to know if you have ever done a cosplay, what have you dressed up as and like, how was that experience? And if you haven't, just let me know about your best con experience because 
we've all had some magical things happen at Comic-Con. Thank you all so much for being here for another week. I'll be back next week with another vlog. I think, I think I'm gonna do a vlog, we'll see. Till then, bye.